Hello out there, interwebs. Today we're going to be talking about uh, the concept of confounding variables. Uh, honestly, confounding variables is one of those interesting concepts uh, when I first started learning about epidemiology that I was introduced to. And then I started realizing really confounding variables are much more vast than just, you know, healthcare or or health in general. You, you know, you could be thinking about confounding variables in marketing, sales, retail, wherever you go. There's the concept of confounding variables. At a high level, a confounding variable is just something that you might be making an assumption about that you, you're not considering when you're making a conclusion. Uh, there's a, for instance, if we were to take the example I'm about to give, let's talk about death rates. So let's say we looked at two different states and looked at their death rates and saw that, for instance, let's say Washington has a death rate of 9.8 uh, deaths per 1,000 people a year, and this is completely made up. Uh, and let's say, for instance, Florida has a death rate of, say, 20 uh, deaths per year per thousand people. So suddenly we're like, OK, let's go to, you know, the CDC and or whatever uh, health organization and and say, hey, we need to start investing lots of money into making sure people don't die in Florida. But we might not be considering something, you know, maybe we're not considering the fact that the mean age or the average age in Florida is much higher than the average age in in Washington, and thus people with higher ages are likely to be more exposed to, and, and yes, I'm using the term exposed to, or not exposed to, but the outcome more likely will be death because it's just how life is, and, and that's a factor and you need to consider something like age. You know, you do this in marketing when you start splitting off uh, different groupings uh, because you know that there are different things that could influence one group that don't influence another group. So what is a confounding variable and how do we define it really? So a confounding variable, uh, besides this example, when you get to the core of it, is something that uh, plays a role as a risk factor for disease. So you see this corner, uh, this graph that I have in the corner, you see exposure outcome, and then you kind of see this confounding factor or variable in the, in the, in the very top. And so typically when we look at an outcome, we think, you know, exposure leads to some sort of outcome, right? But it's obviously not that straightforward. There's a lot of other things that play a role. And the more and more you can explain those things, the more and more you can understand and more accurately make conclusions. So again, it's it's a confounding variable or confounding factor uh, plays a risk uh, for disease. It can also play a role in the exposure to disease. disease. Um, and these are just certain points that can basically lead to you making bad decisions. And I'm going to explain one of those bad decisions that actually was an issue uh, for a while there. For instance, for a long, for a while there, and they've had to do studies on this, uh, they were struggling to reasonably or have defendable arguments of why to keep some trauma centers open because they were seeing that the trauma centers obviously we're having higher amounts of deaths and i say obviously but they were struggling to keep these trauma centers open or at least defend the reasons why they had them because the, whoever it might have been the hospital administrators were looking and seeing much higher death rates at trauma centers than they were at uh, general hospitals so this is just kind of a quote from uh, one of those studies where they were basically doing a national evaluation of the effect of trauma centers on mortality uh, versus non-trauma centers and mostly what they were seeing was that the most problematic most problematic thing they were seeing was they were not adequately adjusting for, in this case, they were calling it referral bias, but they were having, obviously, people with more intense injuries going to that of a trauma hospital than those who were going to a non-trauma hospital. So it was really hard to compare. It was really hard to, to compare these apples to oranges kind of data sets because they're not the same. So if we look at it, for instance, uh, in this case, if we, we break it down, the exposure was to a trauma hospital, right? Trauma hospital, this is exposure, was leading to death. And this is kind of all the hospital administrators were seeing. They're seeing higher death rates than normal, and it's because of trauma hospitals, right? Like, that's the correlation. That's that's the end-all, be-all. That's where it ends. But, hey, well, let's think about the severity of triage level that of people being sent to these hospitals. And I'm simplifying uh, this concept to triage levels. Uh, these papers that you read really just break down to high, medium, low, um, I'm going to use triage levels because I, at least that's explainable to me. So triage levels, 
if you don't know, kind of break down, you can Google the breakdown, uh, just the different severities. So how quickly do you need to attend to this patient? Kind of are, are the different triage levels, one being like this person's about to die right now and you need to, you know, see him. And I'm sure some doctor just rolled over his grave in my explanation, but I'm a data guy, not uh, a doctor. And then, and then five is kind of like, they almost don't need anything. It might just be a band-aid kind of situation. So these are just different triage levels and, and this wasn't considered when they were looking uh, at trauma hospitals versus general hospitals. So all they saw, all they saw when they were doing this was like, hey, trauma hospitals have an 8.6% death rate versus general hospitals that have a 5.4% death rate. Why do we have trauma hospitals? That's what they were wondering. Why do we have trauma hospitals? And so let's start breaking down the math and, and it's gonna get a little mathy in some ways, but it's, it's kind of simple math, or it, it really is simple math. It's addition, uh, division, basic math that you've been doing since you were a kid. So let's talk about it. So first, let's just break down the numbers. So on one column, you'll see we have trauma hospitals. Uh, in another uh, co column, sorry, we have general hospitals. And you'll see the breakdown of different triage levels. So one through four, I skip five just for the sake of simplifying it. I really hope no one is dying that comes into the hospital uh, if they're triage level quote unquote five, um, unless there's some weird complication. So right off the bat, you're gonna see that trauma hospitals get a much higher portion of of patients that are triage level one. Whereas you see a much lower um, population obviously coming that are triage level one for general hospitals, which makes sense, right? Like that's that's what you expect to see. So let's keep going. So well, what was the outcome? So here was the outcome of people going to trauma hospitals versus general hospitals, right? Like there's an LD, so it means lived and died. Uh, so who went to a trauma hospital and lived? Who went to a trauma hospital and died? You can kind of see the breakdown. So. First off, from an absolute number standpoint, yes, there were more deaths clearly at the trauma hospital, but from a percentage standpoint, 9.4%, right? 9.4% for trauma hospital for triage level one, whereas you go over to uh, general hospital, you see 25%, but they have a much smaller number. So this, this kind of gives you a skewed output. So if you look at the bottom, suddenly you see that 5.4 and 8.6% again, and you're like, but this almost isn't, again, this isn't fair, right? You're seeing 25% death rates for triage level ones in general hospitals and a 9.4% death rate um, for level one in trauma hospitals. So how do you fix this? You know, because you could obviously just show, uh, you could just show your uh, hospital administrators this data and be like, see, here's, here's what I did, but it's kind of a lot of data. And for those of you who work with executives, for those of you who know, they don't have time to honestly always stare at all these graphs and, and that's just being straightforwardly. They have to deal with 50 other things at the same time. So it's better just give them two or three numbers that they can make a decision on. And if they have questions to ask you on how you got those numbers, you can then show them this. But step one is just give them uh, standardized numbers. So how do we adjust these rates to just be two numbers? And that's what we're gonna go into next. So this is where we start getting that really basic math. Um, so first we start off by creating a standard population. We create a standard population by just taking the two different populations from general hospital and uh, trauma hospitals for the different triage levels and add them together. So this will create our quote unquote standard population. And then we get the total expected death rate. So if you see the general hospitals expected death rates and the trauma hospitals expected death rates, all you're doing is taking this standardized population and multiplying it by the number of deaths percentage wise that were occurring already. So we knew 9.4% for uh, trauma hospitals and we knew it was 25% for general hospitals. So now you're seeing a much different story, right? With this expected death rate, essentially. Suddenly you're seeing that, wow, at the end of the day, I'm expecting 51 deaths if these uh, trauma hospitals were to continue this percentage from a tra trauma hospital, but from a general hospital, if they were to get that much more trauma level uh, patients, they would see 123 deaths about like, obviously this is averaging. This is making a lot of assumptions, but it allows you to more fairly compare these two data sets. So what does that lead to in the end? Well, that leads you to the end to the actual adjusted quote unquote, uh, case fatality rate. So for trauma hospitals, you're seeing a 4.3% case fatality rate. Whereas for general hospital, you're seeing a 10.3% fatality rate. And now you have a number that is more accurately depicting what is occurring at these two different hospitals. The problem sometimes with numbers is we, we, we're we so quick to get them and we're so quick to provide them to other people that we don't 
fully understand them. And so this is kind of an important step in taking the time to understand outcomes. Like, why did you see what you saw? A confounding factor is just a factor that you didn't think about. It's something that you didn't consider when you were creating a, uh, a research project. It was something you weren't thinking about when you're making an experiment, whatever it might have been. And it's something that definitely can get missed, I think, in business cases, when you're doing things like marketing or retail or whatever you might be seeing and you're correlating things, it, you're just going so fast that you sometimes forget to ask the right questions and say like, but why am I seeing this? Why am I seeing this outcome? Why is it that trauma hospitals were having such higher death rates? And there was a reason. And again, like you might be sit sitting there wondering, well, this is such an obvious thing. Why didn't they think about it? But in the end of the day, again, they had to do research to prove these things. And, and there's multiple uh, research studies that during that time period where they were having to prove these things because it might seem simple, but it's something that Again, when you're, you're just seeing the numbers, people make decisions instantly after they see numbers. So you want those numbers to be as quote unquote truthful as possible. And it's really easy to make numbers say a lot of things. And you have to, again, just make sure you think through all of it. So thank you so much for think, uh, just listening to my rant about confounding variables. Um, I'm hoping that kind of helps you understand them. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Uh, I love trying to help. Uh, we're we're kind of doing statistic concepts on statistics and and different ideas, you know, if you're a data scientist and analyst or something, and, and you have a specific question, whether it's programming or statistics that you want me to answer, please, you know, send me a message and I'd be happy to help you out. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.